Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, today we have with us Professor uh, Mike FX Daly, also the Graduate Program Director for Writing and Producing for Television. Um, how are you doing, Mike? How's, how's everything? <laughs> I'm doing well. It's been uh, a busy semester, but it's winding down. We're almost to Thanksgiving. It's crazy. Yes, yes, we are. Um, thank you for being here as well today, Mike. This is our last session of the series uh, for this fall semester. Um, but yeah, let's let's jump right in. Um, the first question that I have for you is, um, can you tell us a little bit about how you uh, got into writing for television and like your career trajectory into becoming a professor? Absolutely, yes. So um, I am originally from upstate New York, a small town outside of Syracuse called Manlius. Um, and then uh, I went there undergrad to another Jesuit school. So um, I'm a big fan of the Jesuits. They're good teachers. Um, and I came out to LA to break in. I was trying to get into UCLA and USC, but when I discovered LMU had a program, my parents were ecstatic. Um, and I was... Uh, I was also interested. Um, it was a new program back then. We weren't actually a film school yet. It was in the late 90s. So I was under the communication arts school, but I did get my screenwriting. I got my master's in screenwriting from LMU. Um, and when I was there, uh, they we weren't well, where we are now, <laughs> where uh, internships were very hard to get in the actual business. Um, and especially in television. So I just kind of got lucky that I was working at a restaurant with somebody who uh, went went to become a PA on a TV show. And when I found that out, I asked if he could, um, you know, see if I can get an internship. And because he knew them, they let me in as an intern. So I did that in my final year. Um, I also, and then that internship led to another TV show. I was, the first show was a Tony Danza sitcom that nobody saw. Uh, but the other show that was right next door to us was a show called Party of Five. So I actually got to sit on in that. And that's when I started to realize I really wanted to write dramas and hour long dramas. But um, the internship on the half hour with Tony Danza ended up getting me jobs in half hour sitcoms in the late 90s. Uh, it was called TGI Friday back then, uh, where I worked on this show called Step by Step, and I did the Olsen Twin show. But um, I worked my way up as an assistant over the years. Um, and part of it was that internship that really got me in there. But, um, you know, being in an MFA program helped that, you know, me be able to be an internship or to do an internship. I also also got my master's largely because I knew I wanted to teach eventually. So I spent 20 years, 20 some odd years in television. Uh, I worked my way up um, as in the assistant route. I got in with the writers on the shows as, an, as a writer assistant. And then I became what's called a script coordinator. Uh, so I was pretty well known with that. Um, it's a That's more of a technical job where you're like proofing the scripts, putting them out, distributing them to everybody. Um, so that I got really good at, but I was still waiting for my break as a writer. And it took it took like nine years. And I was ended up on a show called CSI, which is a pretty big one. Um, and I got my break. They let me write an episode. Um, in the meantime, friends of mine who I'd known now for eight years because I met them early in my career, they created a show called Reaper on the CW. So then they hired me on as a as a writer on that show. But when that show got canceled, I went, I ended up going back to CSI for several years and writing more episodes. So um, so and then I just worked my way through the business. I worked on over 20, 20 something shows in the course of that time, um, met a lot of different showrunners. Um, and then I started teaching uh, at LMU because as an alumni, they asked me to come back and uh, teach a class. And then I really fell in love with that and realized that I think I'm more suited for that than this business as much as I love this business. So um, I now take much pleasure in helping students get their break into television and and have wild success. So and we have a few wild success stories recently. So I'm very excited. Um, but yeah, now I'm the graduate director of the writing and producing for television program, um, which is kind of. It's it's obviously focused towards um, television, but it 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 does do a little bit of a combo of the the writing program, which we have is the screenwriting program. That's just a pure writing program, and then it it dabbles a little in production. But we're not really teaching you as in the production program would teach you to be either a cinematographer, or an editor, or a director. 
we're teaching you how to think like a television writer who becomes a television producer, which almost all of them do, and 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 learn how to oversee your television show. So it's like managing the production creatively and and um, physically of your show. And that's what we work on. So you do produce a thesis in your final year, but you don't have to direct that. And you really almost shouldn't. Some the people that do have to like prove they can direct it by doing other things first, um, because we really want you to, you know, produce something of quality. So putting together a team and, and producing something is what we want you to do. All right. I know that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you, Mike. Uh, what would you say is your favorite part about working at LMU? Uh, really, it is working with the students one on one. I mean, what I ended up the first class I taught here was a rewrite class for a television script. And it, you know, I was a little nervous because I hadn't like officially been a professor or teacher. I did a TA um, position when I was at, at grad school. So I did have like a class. I had like a seminar for an art of the cinema class. But I, you know, I was a little intimidated to teach writing. And in my, it was one of my old professors who actually hired me on. He was the chair. Um, he said, it's just like a writer's room and TV, Mike. And as soon as I got that, I knew what it was and I loved it. So I just sit at the head of the table and we go over their work and I give them notes and they give each other notes and we work. And it's just, that's what I love. And I said, you know, I never made it to being a showrunner in TV, but I, every class I, I'm a showrunner for like 10, 10 episodes. <laughs> uh, so I do love that working one-on-one -on -one with the students and finding, I mean, really finding there's those magic moments in those writers rooms where like somebody stuck and either myself or one of the students or sometimes the combo which is the really brilliant ones find the answer and find such a cool idea for this this um series and the student gets excited and we all get excited that we helped and that is like the magic moment um and the best part of this this teaching job so. that's awesome mm -hmm. uh what classes do you teach and of those do you have a favorite yeah well it's hard to yeah I think I definitely have a favorite so I have been really lucky in this um that uh I came in part-time um but they started to realize I could do a lot and then they also uh need kind of needed somebody to oversee uh the writing and producing for television programs um portfolio class because they were a little shy on right uh, professors for that so I did actually get um made full-time for that kind of reason so that's a class I do love is the portfolio class we do at the very end um and so after three years we have a portfolio class for both the writing for television students and the writing for screenwriting students um, where we go over all the work they've done over the three years and really polish them so that they're ready to go out with a portfolio of writing we work on their log lines and and in making sure that they can pitch all those projects so that is a really satisfying class um, probably not my favorite because what i've also been lucky to be included in and and now that i'm grad director it makes sense that i've sort of overseen all of it is that I teach right now um, elements of television writing, which is the first writing class that the grad students take as they come in the program, which is really just a, you know, a, it's a basic writing class. We want to make sure everybody, you know, knows how to write scripts because some haven't ever done it. Some have written some, but we kind of get everybody up to the same level. And then week to week after like the first five weeks of lecturing about writing, uh, we start on genres and they, they, every week we explore a different genre like a comedy like sitcoms or um horror shows or soap operas or um what are the other ones we do we do an action show we do a procedural show and i worked on csi so i actually usually use one of my episodes so we can go into depth on that they watch an episode of that genre they have to beat it out to learn how to like structure television so they do a beat sheet and then each week week they also write five pages of any any show in that genre that they want so that's been fun too because the students sort of pick shows that i usually am not aware of and so sometimes i'll have to watch a show and that gives gives me more understanding of television um so that i can look over their pages and know what's going on with that but the best class i teach is going to be in the spring is called the writer's room um, and we basically, over the course of the semester, we simulate four different shows as writer's rooms. We show the pilot of a show. 
um, for two different dramas, two different comedies. And then we use three weeks to break the show, break a season of that show with the, with the class. And then at the end of that three weeks, each member of the class has to write a beat sheet for one episode. But that is just really fun because we're simulating what it's like to be in a writer's room. Um, and I, I took it a little further that the guy who invented this program always he he had everybody take a turn to be the showrunner so every, um once a week every week i i do the first few weeks but then after that there's a student who's running the show that week um but i've gone further than that because in television there is a hierarchy in a writer's room there's the first time you get a job you're a staff writer then you're a story editor you once once you get promoted and then you get promoted to co-producer producer supervising producer co-executive producer and then executive producers at the top so every week I rearrange the students on that list and then when we're pitching ideas and somebody somebody has an opposing idea I I look and I say oh wait who outranks who and I'm like the, your idea wins because you have the the more the and they don't like that but I'm like that's kind of what it's like um you have to be aware of who outranks you and who's been there longer and who um has a little more clout than you just to and then you know you'll get to that place where then you don't want somebody telling you what to do if they're a little lower on the totem pole so it's just a little bit of learning the politics of the writer's room and how to be respectful and work together and um like i said that it's, it's that's always a fun one so that's probably my favorite class um i also the big classes i teach are writing original drama pilots those are the ones that i i teach the most but, and I've taught, um, I have taught one class for production students to do writing. Um, I don't know if I'm the best for that because it's short form. And it's like, I had a hard time wrapping my head around writing something that's self-contained in very short time, but I'm working on that one. Um, and I haven't taught adaptation yet, but that's another one I'd like to teach soon. But yeah, um, I've been lucky to teach a lot of different classes. Yeah, that's awesome. And definitely learning the politics of the industry will either, you know, <laughs> that will determine where where you'll be in your career if you don't yeah. know any better. But that's great. Yeah, I'm glad that we um, teach our students that for sure. Um, how would you suggest an MFA from LMU would help students in their career? Yeah, um, you know, this is a good question, because quite frankly, a lot of people will ask me this, you know, do I need an MFA and, a, you know, as I as it was pointed out to my mother after I got my MFA and I took my first job in television and I made $350 a week for 60 hours. My mom said, do they know you have an MFA? And I said, they don't care. So on some level, no, you don't need an MFA to work in this business. But what I would say um, we have put together to be a television writer, I think this program is kind of invaluable because it gives you the time to, we do a three-year program, which is a little longer than most, but it it actually costs less for than some of the two years. Um, but what the reason we do the three year program is that in the third year we see that as your launch year, and we really work to not only hone your scripts, which the third year gives you the time to do more rewriting. Like that portfolio class is excellent because at that point you have them in a good shape, and you're you're coming into that class with good scripts already, but we're making them better. So you really take it gives you the time in the three years to really hone your skills to learn a lot about the business and then the other great thing about it is an mfa if you don't if you're not aware of this in academia if you ever want to teach on a college level most disciplines have you can't teach on a college level without a phd or a, you know a doctorate level but an mfa a, a masters of fine arts is considered a terminal degree because the thought was to to get a degree on top of that would just be repetitive because you're usually doing something in your art. So, you know, you're writing a screenplay as your thesis or you're writing a television script as your thesis or you're producing a film as your thesis. If you went to get a doctorate, their belief would be you would just do that all over again. So they've deemed an MFA a terminal degree, which means you can teach on a college level as soon as you graduate. And we have actually had people do that. So that's the other benefit. If you see yourself as a professor down the road, which I, I have, you know, obviously, um, and I'm a big fan of it. And I think if you, you know, in television sort of you need to get into television if you like to work with other people. So that often is is a good person to be a teacher as well, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. 
Thank you for that. Um, my last question for you is, is there any advice or guidance you can provide for a student to succeed in an, or out of the classroom? Yes, absolutely. Um, this this business is tough um, and it takes really um, not only, you know, honing your skills and being ready, but also establishing relationships. And so one of the things that I think, you know, one of the mistakes I think some of our students make is to not to go not to go out there either on an internship or even just like mixers um, and trying to meet people. Um, some of the most crazy uh, uh, success stories we've had have been just people really venturing out of their comfort zone and and getting to meet people. Uh, we had um, a, an alumni come back from a TV show called Vita um, and she was speaking there. So our, I got my students to go to the event because I was like, you cannot miss this event. She's a television writer. You get, to, you get to hear what she has to say. And one of our students who was about to graduate connected with her um, and they became friendly. And then, you know, long story short, they connected enough that um, that student be right out of gradu graduating our program got staffed on that show because they were looking for Latina writers and uh, she was a Latina writer. So it was like, it was literally like she was a little bit of a shy person. I didn't know if she really wanted to go to that event, but if she hadn't gone to that event and met that alumni, you know, so and I'm not saying that is it's that easy and it happens that fast. That's a very rare case. But more and more, that's what's happening is that we're um, connecting our students to our alumni in our program and in the writing program. We actually have a mentorship. Um, I believe there is something in production as well, but we connect you with mentors as you graduate. So that you have somebody in the industry just to like ask questions to and talk to and sometimes those can form you know really great friendships and and they can lead to jobs so that's obviously our goal with it um and so yeah it's it's really it is a business where people get to know each other and and help each other out and you kind of need people to vouch for you so it is a business where you have to sort of even if you're a shy person which we often get with writers because sometimes when you want to be a writer you're 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 doing that because you like to avoid other things um but learning to like get out there and i think even the most shy people we've had come in the program have sort of learned to to get comfortable with some of that because that's a lot of the business yeah that's awesome thank you mike um, I would now like to open the floor um, to anyone else. Um, you can raise your hand, you can unmute yourself, um, but yeah, open the floor to all and any questions for Mike here. Okay. Yeah, right. go ahead. Um, so uh, Professor Gino, actually, he talked about this a little bit the other night, but I had a little bit of I had questions about like, how do we, cause you know, writers, we love to be in our little shelves. Um, are there any opportunities um, besides, I know you, there was something like in the beginning of the year where they kind of like make like the writers and everybody kind of mingle together and work together. Oh, yeah. But are there any opportunities throughout like the semester and through the year where writers can kind of like connect with the cohorts and like the other programs and kind of like get out there? Yeah, well, so for between the, writing and producing for television and the, and the writing for the screen um a lot of our, our classes are designed to co-mingle with those so you'll end up having classes together you don't have as many classes with the production students I, i'm not even sure there's any except maybe some electives that you do but the big thing and in the writing and producing for television that we actually require in your first year in that writer's room class in the second semester uh, it is required for you to work on a set. So we get you to go um, find out who needs help on a set, even if you're just a PA, if you've never done anything, you can do that. Um, if you have any skills or talent, um, or you had experience, you might be able to do even more than that. But in the first year, all we require you is to work on a set. And then in the second year, you have a class where we require you to not only work on a set, but help produce that film. So um, because you're going to produce a film in your third year, and so we want you to get out there. So that's the biggest thing. And there's oh, they're always shooting. <laughs> they're always shooting something and they're always looking for help. So even if they're, you know, they're never full up on crew, they're always like, oh, somebody else wants to be around to like help us move faster then let's do it. So it's it's a really that's a good way to do it. We try to do some um, a lot of social things, too, um, between the programs. Um, 
yeah the beginning what you were talking about was um it's it's now right now called story rush it used to be called film rush i'm not sure if we're gonna be able to get back to film rush but because of covid we had to shut down and we made it what we called story rush so that we put production students screenwriting students and television writing students together on teams and then they they um come up with uh basically a story presentation in a powerpoint usually where they're they're pitching an idea that they all came up together they we used to do what was called film rush where they had actually make a film together maybe the writing students would write the script and then the production students would um jump on uh shooting it and what we liked about that and, and even story rush is working for it is that we're trying to connect you guys so that as you go through the program even though you're not having classes together you're at least become friendly and maybe start working on projects together on the side because that's what we really want and we've had a few social mixers that um, my god this year the few that we had are well well populated because i think everyone's tired of covid and being locked up in their rooms and they're all getting out to come to things um, so we've had record turnouts for almost everything we've had this semester. So, yeah, we we try to do more and more of that. But um, the good news is that all three programs are at the Playa Vista campus, which and then and really that's almost all that's there. So you guys kind of have um, exclusive run of the place and you really just sort of see each other in the hallways. And there's an area called the living room where a lot of people sit and eat and there's a ton of different tables there to sort of connect and, and chat and talk. So there are like areas where you can connect with people even if you don't know them um, and, and see each other in between classes as well. So there's a lot of that. Cool. That was a good question, Jordan. Thank yeah, you. Excellent question. Um, Anybody else? Yeah, go ahead, Heather. I think you're muted though. Um, yeah, I was just curious um, if you could expand a little bit on some of the specific skills needed to um, become a good showrunner in addition to writing. Absolutely. Um, that is an excellent question. Uh, and I might have a whole class on that. I think I do. Um, but uh, yes, the showrunner is, um, in fact, there's a great documentary we show. Uh, so if you're going to come to the, into the program and you don't want to spoil or don't, but there's, it is called The Art of the Showrunner. And it's, I think you can find it on YouTube or something. It's a, it's a, like a two hour movie documentary they made where they followed for one year, they followed a bunch of showrunners. And one of them says in it, he said, showrunning is like doing your taxes while writing a play while dancing in front of people on stage and like all at once. <laughs> Cause he's like, it really is a really difficult job. Some people, um, you know, either they have partnerships or some sometimes a showrunner will will just pick a really strong line producer to be their like you know co showrunner for the nitty gritty that they don't want to deal with but it is a difficult job because you're not only the head writer on the show so you're overseeing all the scripts you're sort of in control of what the stories are all about um the showrunner you know that that's the thing is they almost always take a pass at every script so even if you wrote a great you know first draft they're still going to put their little, you know, spin on it. So, but that means as a showrunner that you're, you're almost, you're taking pass on almost every script that comes through. You're approving every storyline, you're approving every, um, you know, script and all of that. But in the meantime, you're also overseeing production on some level enough that you, you know, a lot of times have to deal with the actors because you're sort of the face of the show and the actors want to be sure that you've got their best interest at heart so you're checking in with them sometimes you're dealing with their issues um you're overseeing the directors that get hired because it is a writer's medium we're in charge and the directors work for us unlike movies where it's very much the different uh take usually um so yeah and then there's you know just dealing with the network and the studio uh, which can be a whole other thing because you're 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 making sure that they're happy with the show, they're excited about what we're putting out, and um, you know you're fielding all their their interests um, to make sure we stay on the air. So it's a pretty heavy job, and it's a, it's a really tough one. It usually doesn't go to a, a novice. Um, it used to be that nobody really got their own TV show until they worked their way up on a writing staff to to be about co-producer level um uh, or co-executive producer level but now what we're seeing because there's a need for like newer stories and diversity um 
which that is that, that is actually not just you know the goodwill of people that want to correct some wrongs. It's actually a good business model now, which is exciting for all of us um, because uh, you know Netflix, all the streaming services, they want shows with every type of people, um, you know, because they want everyone to sign up for Netflix. So they're okay with a show that might not get huge numbers as long as it's bringing in a demographic that they wouldn't get otherwise. So it's good business, um, which is great. But the idea is that you can't bring people in who have no experience in television and let them run a TV show because it's it's such an overwhelming job. So what's happening a lot is that the the you know, the new person who has a new idea with a script will often get paired with a seasoned showrunner. And the good ones, and we actually have one teaching for us, is a guy named uh, John Strauss. He's uh, He wrote something about Mary way back in the day with his writing partner, and then he got into TV and he's worked in television forever. But he is now a showrunner that works largely with, um, uh, you know, new and upcoming show you know showrunner wannabes because they have a new idea and he actually is the season showrunner that teaches them how to be a showrunner so he just won a they they won a peabody award for a show called david makes man on the over oprah network so he is the showrunner but the guy who created the show uh who also was the other writer on moonlight besides barry jenkins um and it's his not only his show but it's his like you know life story practically david makes man so um John has been overseeing him and like training him how to be a showrunner. So there's a little bit of that happening, but yeah, it's, it's a difficult job and there's a lot of, you know, bells and whistles to it. So it's something you really have to like, you know, work towards what we try to teach in the program is just at least the understanding of the job and, and some of the nuts and bolts of it. Um, but you know, it's, you really, <laughs> you won't know that job until you've sort of seen it in action sometimes. So um there's as much as we can teach, we do teach. I would say. Cool. Any uh, yes, another question. Me again. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, That's what we're here for. <laughs> um, I wanted to know how many um scripts are the students producing in this particular program? Um, uh, like a semester or a year. I don't know how you guys divide them up. Is there like a certain number that we're hitting or that we would be hitting or Yes. Um, so yeah, in fact, we had uh, this come up in um, our admissions last year, and somebody, I guess, misquoted us because they thought we talk about our portfolio class at the very end, that I the ideal is three to four solid scripts. And I think because of that, uh, we had somebody who was applying to the program who thought that's all we'd said. And then he said, all these other programs, you know, you write like way more than that. And we're like, oh, no, wait, <laughs> let's be clear. You're right, way more than that. We just want you to like hone the finals. So um, just, you know, off the top of my head, the what you the first semester is most of the writing is that elements class. And it's just these little five page sections. So you don't like actually write a full script in your first semester. But in the second semester, we dive you right into you as a television program we actually have them write a screenplay a full screenplay in your second semester and in addition to that you do what's called a spec uh television script which the word spec has been thrown around a lot because all it really means is you, you're writing it on speculation you haven't been paid to write something so everything you write that isn't commissioned is a spec technically but what we refer to in television writing as a spec and it's what i used to have to do in order to get jobs was that you had to write like sample scripts of a show that exists. So I wrote a West Wing episode. I wrote um, an Ally McBeal. I wrote a um, Without a Trace. Um, and those were like my samples to show showrunners that I could write television. Um, and that's used to be what they wanted because they wanted to see how you could write the voice of a show and the feel of a show and the, the rules of the show. Um, but they got bored of those. So now they want original stuff. But we absolutely still teach it because I feel like it's the only way to learn the job of being a television writer is to write those because that's what you're going to do when you get paid to be on a show is to write someone else's show. So you will write either a comedy or a drama of that your second semester and a screenplay. So in the first year, it's really those two scripts, but they're pretty you know, the screenplay is a full screenplay, which a lot of my students are panicking that they're going to go into second semester and have to do. I said, you know, we'll get you through it. And, you know, <laughs> trust me, everybody comes out with a script. Um, and then uh, you come into the next semester 
or the second year and you write both a comedy and a drama pilot original we we force every writer to write both comedy and drama even if they say i'm not a comedy person or i'm not a drama person and we've had people change their mind on that <laughs> or at least they experience it so sometimes like if whatever they don't love if they still don't love it afterwards that might not end up in their portfolio right like if they're not a comedy writer and they tried a comedy but it didn't work that might not end up in their portfolio your spec script won't end up in the portfolio probably either and maybe not your screenplay if you're not a screenwriter um, so then you just start taking electives and then we also have you um, you have to do a rewrite of one of those the comedy or the drama so that's a honing skill too but in the meantime you're taking electives and our electives range from everything like playwriting so we've had people submit plays for their portfolio uh, sketch writing we've had people do like a like a group of sketches as their portfolio if they want to try you know that um video game writing is a little tougher we don't we've never had anyone put that in their portfolio but it's it's a skill to learn um it's an it's another one of our electives we have recently added an, an animation elective which you could write an, an an animated pilot um you know and that could be serious or comedy you know i mean animation's open to everything um so that's a new one we also had a, a couple uh semesters of a portfolio or procedural class where you learn to write procedurals because a lot of people like don't like to watch them as writers because they feel like they're not interesting but there's a trust me as somebody who worked on csi there's a lot of money in a procedural show because they're steady and they're easy and the networks understand them and so they are going to be around forever and if you can write a good procedural you might be able to make a lot of money um i'm still getting paid by those people so um that's always good so yeah so you'll end up um you know, usually going into portfolio, there's like five to six scripts that you're going in with that are usable, and then you have to figure out which ones you want to hone and finish. But I would say over the course of the three years, you probably write about eight to nine, like full scripts, whether they're, you know, a spec or a screenplay or or a, um, a pilot or a play, you know, any of that. So cool. Thanks, Mike. Anyone else? I know James just joined us. James, if you have any questions for Mike. Yeah. Feel free to unmute yourself. And I can recap the whole thing in five minutes. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to know. Um, well, I'm curious, Mike, to know if you have any like favorite student projects that, that you've seen come across your desk. Hmm, that's a good, yeah, no. Um, well, and the the one that really sticks in my head just because I was thought it was such a brilliant idea, and um, she was actually undergrad when she wrote it for me because I do also teach some of the undergrads, um, but she was a senior, and then she decided to come back and join the WPTV program, and she just graduated last year from that. But on her undergrad script that I just kind of fell in love with the idea, she claims that it's already she found out that there was a um, not only a comic book or a graphic novel about it, but that it went on to become a television show so she doesn't want to sell it but i thought her idea was way smarter because the the concept that was already made was called the last man i think it's called the last man where it's like somehow all the men die off on the planet um and there's only one guy left but that comic book that became a tv show was all about the man her idea was that all the men die and it's about the women who survive it. And it was so fascinating because they were using like the sperm banks to like keep propagating the species because they didn't want to die off. And there was all this like political like interest of, you know, how women would run things. And, you know, I just I love that. I keep encouraging her to like get that out there because it was such a great idea. And I thought, man, that's such a cool concept. Um, and she had such a great spin on it. So. Yeah, but I mean, we get a lot of those and I get excited about really everybody's. I mean, that's the fun part about doing these pilot classes is they I, I've never had a class where there's like, you know, eight scripts that are a lot of like, <laughs> like they're all so different and interesting and and you really get the voice. And that's really what we're looking for is honing your voice, because um, everyone has a different, you know, even if they did like take similar top topics everyone's going to write that so differently you know from their unique perspective um as a person overall and so that's one of the things we also you know really cultivate as much as we can um and i think it's what one i mean I, i'm not saying the other schools don't do it but i think you know we're we're not run by like as a film school there's no um 
there's no in involvement with the Jesuits where they tell us what we can and can't do at all. But what they what their theory about education is, is, you know, there's a lot of social justice in what they talk about. And there's just also a lot of like, let's think about what we're doing and, and its impact on society. So that's one of the things I think has trickled into the film school. And we tend to, you know, think a little more about the ethics or, you know, the caring about like what we're writing and why is it important to write something about this so it doesn't you know it doesn't mean you can't write a great blockbuster like fast and the furious but <laughs> maybe our fast and the furious will have a little more thought-provoking thoughts in there <laughs> so um uh we do sort of pride ourselves with that the other thing we really pride ourselves in um that comes out in a lot of the classes is um collaboration um, there are other film schools that really see competition as an important thing to be taught, and they really push that. Um, I feel like we are the opposite of that. We think, you know, it takes a team to make anything. Um, and in, in writing, it's always great to have somebody to read your work and give you notes. So we're really big on um, collaboration. And I've seen that pay off too with the fact that our cohorts go out, they get jobs. And then when they are done with their job, they get one of their friends from the cohort on that job before they leave it. That's been happening a lot. And that's what we love um, is to really start a community here. So yeah, cool. Yeah, Thank exactly. You. Well said, Mike. Um, um, I got- I, know, I love that. selling this place because I love being here. <laughs> 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 we love having you. You're the best. Um, Dakota's got his hand up. Uh, Dakota is one of our current third year graduate students for um, film and television production. Go ahead, Dakota. Yeah, I just wanted to like echo that point about collaboration. And I know Mike had said that like, um, especially writing the thesis, they, they don't ask students to direct those theses. Um, as a directing fiction student, I'm like, I've been given the opportunity to direct one of the WPTV theses, and it is arguably one of the highlights of my time at LMU because so much of what I've been doing is directing my own work. And now I get to direct something that someone else wrote and I get to really like sharpen my directing skills by like taking a piece that isn't mine and like actually directing, which is really exciting. So the collaboration aspect here is very, very real and very exciting. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. 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 Does anyone? Um, have, yeah, Jordan. Yeah. Y'all are sick of me. Anyways, um, Never. so I, <laughs> I had a question about the application itself. Um, so are you guys looking for anything in particular when you're like looking at pieces or is there like, 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 what are you really looking for? Like what jumps out at you? Not that I'm necessarily going to like write that, but I yeah, just yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're really looking for people that are, you know, and we know you're coming to us because you want help with it, but we're, we're looking for the germ of a voice or a point of view um is is almost the most important so we actually do read your personal statements as much as we read your like regular work because we want to kind of know who you are coming in and sort of what your goal is for it all um and so we're we're looking for you know people that have a point of view of something to say that maybe isn't unique or different i mean that definitely weighs a lot more than um in a writing program obviously we want to make sure you can handle it so there is some looking at like you know your past you know, scholastic history, but we've had people come in that didn't do well undergrad because they weren't like as motivated until they figured out what they wanted to do with their lives. So we're, we're much more open to that. And we're, but we're more into like, you know, do you have something we can work with to, you know, help you hone your skills and become, you know, a, a creative. So we're looking for a little germ of that really. It doesn't have to be the best written script. Obviously, I mean, part of it is like if it's badly formatted or anything like that, that's all stuff we can teach you. And that's what we're here for. So it, a lot of it is just that point of view or that idea of like, you know, you know, what what are you going to be writing like and, and what do you have to say? So we, we love personal stories and um, and just to get to know who you are. Yeah. So in fact, in my elements class, I just added one of the um, the feedback we've gotten from students over the years is that they wanted to talk a little bit more about um, like di writing diverse characters. Um, and so I have all these genres that I've been going through. And the other complaint of that class a little bit was that we only really had one week of comedy. 
So I thought, well, I could add another comedy. And I was thinking about doing animation because I didn't cover that one. But I sort of came up with what I'm calling the dramedy. And I'm going to teach that this week, actually. Um, so and it's it's all these shows that have popped up that are really um, centering around like a personal experience of, you know, somebody who hasn't had a voice on television before. So it's all it's like insecure in Atlanta, you know, representing the African-American or, you know, at least bringing a new perspective to that. But even there's like a show called Special about a, a gay man who is um, uh, got multiple sclerosis, I think. Um, but yeah, like all these shows and they're comedies, right? Because they're kind of about their situation. And so it's, you know, it's something to laugh. There's, you know, you have to take, you can't take yourself too serious. So most of them are like Dean comedies, but sort of more dramedies because they really get into their personal beliefs. So we're going to cover that. And because I, I, you know, I started making a list and I'm like, oh my God, there's a genre here because there's so many shows like this right now, even Shrill, you know, um, I don't know if you've ever seen that one um uh, about a plus size woman basically and you know just these unique perspective shows um and the fun part about it is that um normally i have them you know they write five pages of a show that exists in that genre but because this is such a personal thing i'm making the i'm having them write a five page of what they would do with a show about themselves or you know some show that represents who they are so that they can sort of play around with uh, some original writing in this semester so yeah, I'm excited about that. And I'm like, you know, so that's, that's something also. No, you're spitting Mike. I love that. <laughs> I always, sorry guys. Anyways, I always, I, um, I love that like genre. It's so weird. And like, I try to explain to people, I'm like, this is what I want to write. This is it. Right. Like it's insecure. It's Atlanta. It's shrill, but it's like, it, it bends the form so much that like, yeah if I were to be like, it's a drama, no, but really it's comedy. And then people, unless you like know, unless you watch it, you won't yeah. really know what you're looking at and you won't know what people are talking about. Anyways, 100%. you should make that into a whole class, just a little round. I know, I would love a whole class, absolutely. Yeah, no, and that's one of the things we actually do. And I try to talk about it in this, these are early classes because I want them to think about it. Because when we get to portfolio, a lot of times what we're telling them is like, you know, you kind of have to pick because because the television writing students are also producing a thesis. Um, well, a when they're talking about what to produce as a thesis, they do think about like what is the piece that defines you as a writer. But in portfolio, we're also doing that. We're like, what's the piece that you want to put forward? And it doesn't necessarily have to be like autobiographical, one hundred percent. It can just be like what speaks to who they are as a person. And we really want them to hone in on this. And we've had some students get to portfolio like in the past where we didn't like push it enough early on in the program. And they were like, oh, man, I wish you had said that I would have written something more personal or, you know, like they hadn't. They are always thinking about just like ideas that have nothing to do with who they are. So but we like to at least push you to do like some of that. So that's why I'm excited that like introducing it into this early class will help. So on some level, hopefully all our classes are that. <laughs> but down the road. Um, yeah, because I, I teach drama writing, but I did do um, a couple comedy shows in my career. And um, so I do, I'm open to them writing the dramedies in, in the hour long show, but they do have to do an hour version of it, just at least for my class. So we study that format, but, um, they can always cut that down to a half hour, which I've done with scripts before too. So yeah, absolutely. When you go into, oh, sorry. I don't know. If <laughs> That's <right>. all right. <laughs> okay. Unless when somebody you... hasn't. Oh, oh yeah. Go. Yeah. go ahead, Jordan. Oh, oh yeah. I'm mute. I had a couple quick questions. Sure. Um, so the the scripts that we turn in for the application, are we able to work on them and develop them during the program or would it have to be something completely new um, in the classes? It, that was really up to you. Um, some people have, uh, you know, restarted that. Most of our classes um, will start from the beginning of an idea, but you can, you know, have a script and then maybe, you know, do a whole rewrite on it. Uh, we have actually had people ask, and I think we usually allow this, is you do have a rewrite class that you're supposed to do like your comedy or your drama original pilot. But if if you don't like those as much as something you wrote before you got here, we let you do that. But the really most common version of that is that people often will bring that script into portfolio because it was a script they liked, but they hadn't learned 
what they learned in three years. So now we rewrite it and they can make it a great script, you know? So yeah, it's not wasted in other words. And it's something, if you're really passionate about, you can absolutely bring it into the program on some level and maybe even really early. It's up to you. Okay, great. Um, and then the second question I had, um, you mentioned that the third year is kind of a launch year. And I was just curious as to like, what percentage of graduates are able to successfully transition into some part of the entertainment industry? Like, yeah, we have to do the numbers on it, but I think we're getting pretty up there, aren't we? <laughs> do we we have numbers on that yet? Yeah, yeah. Not off the top of my head, um, but I do know that as far as um, you know, our student success, it. it and some of them get to happen while they're in the program. I, I have heard of a, a couple of our own just this very year, right, Mike? Yeah. Um, we I lost know that, a couple. <laughs> we lose them sometimes. You yeah. know, <laughs> it's unfortunate for us, but at least they carry the LMU name and the work that they've developed awesome. has been through, you know, the guidance of our faculty and through the program. Um, it's it's still a win for them. Um, but yes, we we have had um, you know much success with our students, and as Mike has mentioned, um, our alumni pull up our you know students with them as well. Like they're constantly bringing. Um, it's like LMU for LMU. You know, it's like oh, I've, I've got people off the top of my head, um, or they reach out to our graduate program directors, and they're constantly involving LMU students and alum yeah. as well. Um, yeah, um, I, what's the, I, I know there are a couple of, um, shows lately. Um, well, yeah, so I will, I will talk about one in particular, cause I, she's probably one of my favorites, <laughs> but, um, Karen Joseph Adcock graduated in 2007, 18. Um, she had somehow, and I think it was her lead. I don't think, I think she was the first one in there. Somehow she ended up as an intern on Bojack Horseman, which was like a highly coveted show. She somehow got her way in there. She got promoted to writer's assistant. She brought in somebody else to be an intern from LMU. And then she, she, you know, was a writer's assistant on that show. Through that show, she met somebody who worked on Atlanta. She ended up on the writer's assistant on Atlanta. And then she replaced herself with another LMU on, um, so Chickadilly was one of our other students. She was actually screenwriting, um, but they were friends. And so she brought her in. Chick stayed on BoJack, went to Tuco and Birdie. It wasn't a spinoff, but it was the same creators um, that were on the show. And she was promised a script and then the show got canceled. But because of COVID, it, it came back and then she actually got her script. And then she, that's Chickadilly, she just got um, staffed on Criminal Minds of all things, but she had an internship on that show. Um, in the meantime, Karen went not only to Atlanta, um, and I guess she did end up writing an episode there because somebody said, yeah, she's on like the last season. I was like, okay. But she also did How I Met Your Father. Then she just did The Bear. And that was, we didn't know, we kind of lost touch with her because she was so busy. Um, one of our, our, the chair was watching the show, The Bear, and she said, I got to episode five and I was obsessed with the show. And I see Karen Joseph Acab wrote it. She's like, I'm screaming in my apartment, you know, in her house. So, and then, and she was on Yellow Jackets too, but I think, I think that's where she is now, or maybe she went back to the second season of The Bear. But yeah, so, and then in the meantime, I've talked to a few of the rest of her cohort and they are all like, assistance on shows that she like left behind <laughs> so like or or like she heard you know somebody needed somebody and she helped them get a job so that was like 2018 um we just yeah the the student we just lost was um she was an undergrad she was only going into her second year of, she, so she went to us undergrad she decided to like get her master's right away so she came back to us in the master's program but she was about to enter the second year but she got offered um a writer assistant job on a show that is new and could staff her and that's the only job i tell them I, I recommend they do actually leave for because that can lead right to a writing job and you don't need your master's but I, but i know she ultimately would like to teach so i think if there's any lull in her career she might come back to us and and finish her degree um but yeah and then we had like back in the day octavia bray was with us um sometimes what the what our students will do because they are eligible while they're still in grad school, they can actually apply to the, there's every studio has um, you know, like a diversity program. And so they can get into those. And because those are geared towards people working, they're also pretty adaptable to when you're still in grad school. Um, 
So some of them have done the ABC writers program. Um, and that's what Octavia did. And, and they ended up putting her on the show Raven's home. So she wrote on that for several years, right out of like graduating. Um, I know earlier in 2014, we had Sh uh, Chantel Wells um, did that and she got put on Jane the Virgin um, as, as like part of the diversity program as like a intern, but then she ended up getting staffed on the show and, and writing on that for several years. She went on to Yellow Jackets, but she missed Karen. Um, so yeah, we've had a lot of um, success recently. And then the success just helps because everybody sort of helps each other out. Um, most of our grads are at least working at some job. Some of them, it's a little more unglamorous, you know, assistant work, but, um, you know, most of them are landing something. Our internship programs are really, really helped. Um, and there's, there's a lot available now and there's a lot of like support there for that. So, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Cool. Uh, Jordan, I know you, or Heather, did you have any other additional questions? I know. Oh, no, that was it. Okay. Yeah, Jordan, did you do you remember your question? <laughs> oh, sorry. It was just, it was just about the class I was going to ask when you're teaching a genre, um what are the type of materials that we are going to look at and then also do you kind of like teach from your own perspective? Yeah, um so or experience, sorry. Yeah, the so the this program was designed uh by a writer um named uh, Steve Duncan and he actually um he created the program he was in the screenwriting program here when it became a film school and they knew he mostly did television in his career he created a show called um tour of duty which was a military show and he was a um a, um a navy guy uh so he came in with the expertise and he said he just talked his way into being the showrunner <laughs> uh, he talked to me a lot about that because he hadn't done television be before he got his own show and that was such a rarity especially back then but he basically said no one can run my show but me and um he pulled it off for a few years um and then he ended up running other shows because he had problems with his own show like i guess he just fought them a lot so um <laughs> But yeah, he's great. And and he came in and he was like, so he designed this program and I love it. I think he did such a great job. But all what I use in that right now are still his PowerPoints. And uh, the professor that teaches it with me, it teaches the other section. We have been talking about how we may upgrade them because as much as we love Steve Duncan, he has some little quirks in there that are like, you know, we don't know how to teach quite. He play, he has like music at the beginning of each yeah. one. It's kind of kind of funky um but i like it uh so yeah but so he laid it out he's also wrote a book um about the basics of writing we use in that class and he did one on genre so there are some like you know there's some from his book chapters that you can read but for the most part we talk about like the you know the ideas of each genre like what are some of the things about writing a, that genre that you have to think about like what are the you know some of the hallmarks of those shows um and all of that and then um yeah so and then we go through some techniques like so with horror there's definitely techniques to writing horror and some of that comes also from the original the original class was elements in screenwriting that still exists for the screenwriting students so some of you know we stole some of their lesson plans for those too because there are like skills to writing certain things um and then you know and then the soap um he didn't have a big PowerPoint on soap operas, but the other class I taught was an undergraduate class in the history of television. Um, and I had a, actually it was one of my um, grad students graduated and then ended up teaching um, for us. And she became my writing instructor in that class. And she got really mad at me when I was sort of dismissive about soap operas. <laughs> so she said, Mike, soap operas changed television. And she's convinced me of that. So I now have quite an extensive soap opera um, presentation that was largely based on her PowerPoint that she put together for me. Um, because soap operas, when they came in in the 80s, the nighttime soaps like Dallas and Dynasty, they did actually change how other shows got made because a lot of these cop shows started to steal the idea of like caring about their personal lives and all of that and following storylines over other episodes instead of just being um, episodic. And so, and you can really argue my big thing that I say at the end of that class is that Game of Thrones is really a soap opera, people. <laughs> you know, it's like a big soap opera with lots of dragons. So um, yeah, so I, I I like to talk about that. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, and I'm constantly rebuilding that class, like I, you know, like I said, so. It's a fun class, but yeah, the genres are really fun. Cool. 
we usually have at least one or two students that don't want to even sit through the horror <laughs> and then they have to watch an episode two and they're horrified by horror but i usually get them through it and sometimes they write the scariest stuff because they're they're the most afraid <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> Thank you, Mike. You're making me reconsider how I look at Game of Thrones <laughs> and other television series. Yeah. Um, well, we are coming up on time. Um, yeah, I wanted again to thank everybody for being here. Mike, especially, thank you so much. Um, I will, if you don't already have my email, I'll put my email address in the chat. That way you can uh, reach out to me or if you have any additional questions for Mike, I can pass those along to him yes. as well. Um, Mike, was anything else you'd, you'd like to say to the group? Uh, I mean, just that I'm really looking forward to your applications. Um, that's what I'll spend <laughs> my Christmas break doing. And I'm excited, actually. I'm excited to see who's coming to us uh, next because, um, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun being part of that process and uh, helping people find their way into the program. Um, like I said, I, you know, I'm the biggest fan of this program, so I'm going to I'm going to talk it up all, all day long. But um, yeah, and I hope you guys will join us because we uh we really uh, love working with people and, and getting them out there and watching their success. So 